my staff? Yep. Okay. That's a pretty good trick. So that's 30. 30 damage becomes 15. And then only five of that. We need something other than fire. Son, uh, you also have a movement. Keep in mind, you guys are hasted, and uh, Ferris say you hasted the round before this. You're seventh level, so haste will go down uh, in round six. Can Son see through any of this shit? No, the mist you can see five feet into. Um, you have a vague sense that the frilled surprise is somewhere over here because there's a little bit of like defensive sparking. Mm -hmm. And if is Ferris a singing or not? Not yet. Okay. Uh, you could also see a little bit of blue on this side. Mm -hmm. Like you could see a little bit of. Yeah. Uh, nah. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I have a weapon crystal fiend slaying. And I'm going to attach it to my bow. Okay. You you take out this crystal and jam it into the kind of like above the handle uh, of the bow. And you notice that there's this crackle of energy that goes up at the bow. And the bow almost like grows uh, runes. Kind of like into the wood of the, or the bone of the bow. Uh-huh. Um, then... Basically, I walk here. Okay. You call, over the surprise. you call the frilled surprise. Okay, the frilled surprise comes bounding over. Then I walk back. Uh, you have, no, you have fixed the thing and then you moved. I oh, actually, yeah. I actually think you're, you, I think you're still standing there, and then you, you could probably just call the frilled surprise over, and you've got a, you've got a chain of animals now. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, the train. You've got two animals following you. Um, this happened. There's some confusion at the front, likely, as they're like, what bounty hunter? <laughs> and cows? <laughs> there should be no cows on the train. You know, like, there's, there's, there's a very confused conversation probably happening as the drunk dwarf is trying to explain about things that... Um, is the cow still there? Hmm? Is the cow illusion still there? I I don't know. No, it, it would have faded. Uh, uh, it's gone by now. Okay. All uh, the illusions should be gone. There may still be grease in front of the door. I think grease lasts tens, right? The things that you left in the uh, in the cattle car are the meat sled with all of the uh, your thack eggs, and then the JE wooden door is is lying back there, and then your your the druid friend that you briefly met is sleeping in the hay and um, might still be Not a might still be yeah. sleeping. The eggs should be hidden, uh... Uh, Ferrisay. Oh, no, sorry. Top of round two is the tar-blooded titan spawn. Um, he is going to attempt to dispel magic again. I'm ready. Oh, okay. The has gone. It's minutes per level. So the professor's ready to action goes off, which means that your initiative changes to that of 25, so that's like you rolled a 23... However, it will go quicker than you next round. All right. I'm going to read you something. Okay. Spell-like abilities. Spell-like abilities can be dispelled, but they cannot be counterspelled or used to counterspell. <laughs> so, so, you, so you actually... Well, first identify the spell. So give me your spellcraft check. The DC on this is 23 because you can't see him. I'll make it 21 because you, you kind of know what his tactic is. Okay. So spellcraft uh, check. Yep. 32. You know he's casting... Not only do you know he's casting Dispel Magic, you know the means by which he's casting Dispel Magic, and that is a spell-like ability. Mm -hmm. You know that you can't automatically counterspell it. You, you know that you'll have to rely on the Dispel Magic's ability to actually get rid of magic. So okay. there's going to be a roll here. You get to decide whether you're going to use the charge or not. I'm going to use the charge. Okay, so now we've effectively got a a spell effect that you're trying to dispel. So, uh, his cast... the 
you give me a d20, you add your level or the level of the item, which I think you boost to your own level, correct? Yeah. Do you have any other feats or abilities that increase your dispelling ability? Uh, no. Okay, so give me a d20 plus 7, and I know the level that you're trying to break. 19. So a d20 plus 7 means you dispel eighth, an 8th eighth level caster's magic. He is a higher level caster than 8th level. So your dispel magic goes out, his dispel magic washes over yours, and is now trying to puncture through the ward, and he gets to roll his dispel magic ch uh, attempt to see what level of magic he dispels. And he dispels 11th level magic again, uh, which does not bring down the ward to the train. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and you can hear him pacing around, maybe his wings flapping a little bit. You, you, you don't know where he is. Like he could be on either side of the, the train. He moved. Uh, so that was the professor. Your initiative changes a little bit. Farisay, you're next. I'm gonna go across kind of like this until I see him. Okay. Uh, yeah, he, 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 there? he, yeah, he stalked to the south and he's, he's just... Like stalking, like he's mad, or pushing up against the barrier might might hurt him. Um, he's really pissed off, though. Well, it's it's maybe it's hard for a creature that looks like that to look happy. <laughs> oh, you're too weak to get through, and weaker still as time goes on, aren't you? I'll uh, text his uh, saves. Um, professor, he's what a brave soul to stand against one such as I. He's certainly very sure of himself. It's a DC twenty will save. DC twenty will save to hex his saves. Uh, this is a supernatural ability which gets through his spell resistance. Boo! Uh, is this a divine spell? Or power? No, it. You're an. You're a witch. He rolls a seven. He rolls a seventeen. Boom! I have. I have successfully hexed his uh, uh, saves. What, his saves are minus two now. Yes. Or let me make sure I get it right on how long. <laughs> oh, uh, four. Let's see here. I think eight rounds. Nice. Yeah, it's going to be a nice one. Okay, marked on the combat sheet. Uh, actually, nine rounds. I will move that one more round over. Delightful. Uh, <laughs> you could see him trying to peer through the mists at where you are. The mists are indeed... Uh, he's, yeah, he's, he's scanning... He, he, he does not look like he's got a fix on your exact position. Uh, however, it looks yeah. like he knows the general location of where you are. Uh, that, that makes sense. Ugwe. Uh, Ugwe's got more defensive spells. Are we fighting this thing, is what he says to... Well, yeah. I'll try to talk to it, but I don't think it will listen. Yeah, that fireball may have... Um, may have kind of killed those chances. If I could get an eye on it, I may be able to reason with it uh, in its own way. Have you, been, have you been able to reason with one foe yet? Okay, Ugwe is going to use um, two of his Eldritch Pool ah. to Enduring... He's gonna he's gonna add a plus one to his blade and add keen to his blade, and he's gonna do this for minutes per level, so he'll eat up two of his uh, two of his points. So his his blade is now keen and plus one. There's some magic. Uh, he he like clicks his uh, his uh, the blade lock open and kind of reveals the blade a little bit and touches it with a uh, with a clawed thumb. Uh, and you can tell he's imbuing magic into his own sword without drawing it. Uh, Makronom Gobbler. Oh, he looks really sticky. 
I don't think you want to get into bear hug with him or do any sort of wrestling. He's sticky like you. Yeah, I wonder what sticky me and sticky him would make probably a big mess. <laughs> <laughs> Mokar yes. Nam slides off of uh, Zephyrus's back and then squishes his way between the bars. I give Mokar a high five. Oh, a little tendril comes out. <laughs> uh, Zephyrus. Uh, I don't recall. It's been a while since I've used the wand. Is there a penalty for me to take out a wand so I can use it? Uh, depends. It. No, but it, it just manage your hands, right? So it where's your where's your staff? Your 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 trunk has got the staff kind of wrapped around, like wrapped around it. So yeah, you're hold you're, you're holding your magical staff that way, and yeah. then do you have your uh, scythe out or not? Uh, I have my scythe in my one hand. Yeah, so I have okay. a free hand. So you do have a free hand. So you take out the wand, and then what are you doing with it? Uh, so, because in game nine, episode nine, you made the ruling that said wands are magic completion devices, which means I get a bow for bonus on it. Yep. Uh, I am going to shoot a magic missile, cast your little five. You need to target the creature, and you can't see him right now. Uh, are you sure I can't see? Oh, okay. Okay, never mind. He's. Yep. Ooh, never mind. Uh, I'll delay it. You could also pull out the wand and ready for when you see him to... Yeah, I'll, okay, I'll do that. Okay. I'll do that. To be fair, even if the mist wasn't there, you wouldn't be able to see him. You, you can't draw a straight line. Son? Yeah, I, I didn't realize that there were two doors. I only saw the one door. Um, Son delays action. Okay. Uh, uh, train, if... The confusing conversation continues. Is there maybe trying to strike up a plan, or somebody is sent to go check on what's going going on? You guys are the uh, the rear guard at this point. The tar blooded titan spawn. Well, third time's the charm. I think he's a little bit quicker than the professor uh, and gets off his dispel magic before the professor can. Uh, Before the professor can uh, try to dispel it, he disp oh, he dis he dispels fifth level magic. Rolls a nat one. Nat one? <laughs> Is it? It's probably not possible to crit fail on a spell like ability, huh? I think he's frustrated at this point, and the tar blooded titan spawn moves. Does he not move into my line of sight? No. Uh, only Pharisee sees that he moves away. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Um, I'm going to continue with my plan. Um, I'm going to cast Wall of Blindness Deafness Ooh. here. Where? Okay. <laughs> A blazing, is it opaque or is it... Uh, 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 translucent. Translucent, okay. But there is, there is a visible like light coming from within the mist oh pretty says pixel oh you're too weak aren't you can't get through oh, so sad i guess you and your belt are going to starve today the the heavy breathing and the the growling stopped at your mock I'll come out here. Uh, yes. I think he'll probably come through. Um, I'll let you know when he does. I'll let you know when he's in the doorway. Okay. Uh, Professor. You actually uh, went just before Fairsay. Sorry, I missed, I missed you. That's all right. I'll just huh? start uh, casting Summon Horror. Oh, right, of course. You start casting Summon Horror, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, Farisay puts up the wall and taunts Ugwe. Ugwe is going to stand at the edge of mist and ready in action to strike. Makronam. 
Oh, where are we fighting from? It's very constrained in here. Can you get your dog and your lizard out of the way? <laughs> Makranam's gonna... Uh, gonna... Also ready in action. Zephyros. Zephyros is gonna I'll move back anything. in a moment and you can have my spell. Zephyros is gonna maintain, maintain he's ready. Okay, with his wand, Son. Uh, well, Son ready in action last turn. You delayed. Uh, oh, yeah, delayed in action. Um, I guess now he just ready in action, pulls out his, you know, for, for bow shot. Okay. People on the train are oblivious to the, to the horror that has gone on to this car. The tar-blooded titan spawn is going to retort to your, to your taunt. He moves back to the corner and he's going to fire a spell through the opening. A chaotic swirl of multicolored lights explode and leap forward, ricocheting over everything. Is he just going to blast at the doorway? We'll see how many squares he can get into the doorway. He gets two squares into the doorway, so it erupts here. Okay, the swirling light um, does different things to different creatures. So we're going to go in order of initiative, and the animals are on uh, are on San's turn, and then the uh, the captive is on the train's turn. So last, his caster level is that. So he does. Twenty-seven chaotic damage. Ah, fun. All right, and oh, the no. and the will save DC is eighteen. All right, so let's uh, let's go in order initiative. Professor, you're not caught in that. Farisay, you're caught in that. What is your alignment, Farisay? Uh, chaotic neutral. Okay, you take no damage. Ah. Um, Pixel, is she the same alignment as you? That's a good question. I think probably yes. Okay, so she takes no damage. Like, um, if, if anything, she'd be like maybe chaotic good? Yep. She's chaotic. Definitely chaotic. Ah. Cleric Edo, uh, thanks for all the gift subs. Very cool of you. Welcome to the channel. I've had problem with XSplit. There should be actually celebrations, but I'll have to go and fix those afterwards. King of the gift yeah. subs, exactly. Very cool. Uh, so Farisay and her familiar are chaotic, so they take no damage. Ugwe is lawful. Oh no! And his <laughs> and, and his wiz, and his wisdom's been impacted because of the uh, because of the mists. So he's at yeah. a minus. He's at a minus one to his save. He rolls a nat one. So he takes 27 chaotic damage. Holy shit. And the haste effect that was on him is negated by the slow effect that is now on him. So there's a crackle of his haste and he's no longer hasted. Uh, then Makarnam is inside this. Makarnam I do not think is chaotic. I think he is just neutral. Yep, he is a true neutral animated uh, sentient bag of holding slash mimic in his will save. Mm -hmm. It's plus six. Uh, he fails. He takes half, so 13. Oh, he! Zephyrus is outside of it. Uh, Son is outside of it, but the frilled surprise is caught inside the frilled surprise uh will save is plus two the dc is 18. go ahead and roll that uh gene 19. you make the save so the the frilled surprise oh, nice. takes uh a quarter damage which would be 
six? This real surprise is really nailing its roof. I'm just going to move Balmet off to the side. Balmet's on your person. Uh, yeah, the, the Frilled Surprise gets kind of hammered by the lights a little bit. He tried to shock them back. Uh, and he's not even bloodied. The, the thing, the thing, little thing's tough. Uh, However, you're not too sure how often this creature can do this. Uh, as these swirling lights uh, you do see were about the size of a fireball. And that was the answer to, his, uh, in, to your taunting. Uh, this brings us to the Professor's turn. Professor, your summoned, your summoned creature goes off. Yes, it does. Uh, so I will complete a summon horror level three. Okay. Um, and I will uh, do it on top of the candle I lit earlier, which increases the number of summons uh, that spawn. Um, okay. And... You're summoning evil outsiders? Uh... Yeah, I, I guess they are. I, I guess they'll probably just fall apart here. I, I guess we'll find out what happens. I'm attempting to summon, uh, where was it? A... Oh, don't, don't worry, brother, just to spell the protection first. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I'm going to do the Kako Demon. I have a token here. I don't know if it'll let me. If we have six of them, bro. Yeah, you want another one of these little evil tadpoles? So you attempt. I mean, you were using the candle of Balbodnothep. You try sorry, to. How do you spell that? <laughs> Balbodnothep. Um, I just like the way he says it. <laughs> yeah. Balbodnothep. The H is probably near the T, but whatever. It, it's some sort of demon. Is it? Did they show up in Maples? No, I'm getting the uh, I'm getting the the question marks again. Are they caco fiends? Yeah, dude. I went and looked up. I made tokens for all these. Okay, so you all around the the candle of Balbadnathep, it just sort of blows out. You realize the candle was not used, and uh, how many of the things did you summon? Uh, I'm summoning it, the one at the the level, so only one would have come out without the candle. Uh, with the candle, how many? Two. Um, I I think we rolled maybe last time. I don't remember what happened. Okay, so there are three little tiny tadpoles. They shouldn't be that big. That's just sort of appear around the candle, but uh, but it appears the ground is like a um, uh, like a frying pan, and these things just sort of flop around <laughs> around the candle and are kind of burning up, and then like leeches being being doused with uh, with uh, with salt, they just sort of curl up and die, uh, and then give me a spellcraft check to see if you make the uh, if you make the um, the connection as to what happened. Thirty four. Yeah, the protection from evil uh, ward on this train car is keeping you from doing what you want to do. Well, go, I know go, ahead, go ahead and read Protection from Evil, and you may find some sentences that really explain why this didn't work. Well, uh, however, if he mind wipes himself for this, because <laughs> yeah, he gets it, I really remember why it didn't work. Yes. <laughs> so so you, make, you make this, like, conclusion, but now the question is, do you quick draw the wand and wipe it across your forehead? Oh, for sure, yeah. Okay, so, so describe what spell is in this wand for those that are watching. Uh, so this is a uh, memory lapse. It uh, makes me forget everything that happened since the last round. And so I will take it out, press it to my head, and close my eyes against all of the terrible dark things I've done as a professor so that I continue to sleep soundly in the knowledge that I'm definitely not evil. Yes, Definitely. because as one casts evil spells over and over and over, their alignment may be pulled evil, and Professor's um, cure or fix for this is just to not to remember all the evil spells he's cast. However, I, as I, I get you to do every single time you cast an evil spell, mark down the level of the spell and the number of times you cast <laughs> that particular so evil not, spell. Uh... One summon horror, one, three, summon horror, twos, uh, four summon horror, threes, and a couple of visions of hell at this point, so. Uh, about nine evil spells? 
most of them level three. Mockerdom's like, oh, what were those things? Is it kind of curled up and died? Uh, no, no, the the little the little tadpoles that he summoned. Uh, Ugwe just steps on one because he doesn't he doesn't like the look of them. Uh, R- Rover is growling and sort of sniffing at one and actually eats the eats one of them. Uh, be- uh, I, I, I stop him. Okay, <laughs> you, kind of, but you give him a bap over his nose yeah. and he whine he whines a little bit. That was the professor's turn. Uh, lovely, uh, Ferrisay. Um, I am going to move action start bard song. Yep. Uh, with uh, my pipes. And okay. And touch of idiocy uh, for pixel to hold. Oh, pixel is holding a touch of idiocy spell. Yes. Nice. Okay. Look at this! Your front, nice. your, your, your front line is your witch bard. Come on, guys. Uh, Ugwe. Uh, yeah, I'll take a. Yeah, um, that, that's good. I, I I gotta go. I'll be back in thirty seconds. Cut. Ugwe, what's Ugwe doing? Are we are we fighting? He. It'll come through. I think it'll come through. <sighs> oh no! You've 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 done so much pain to us whatever will we do <sighs> mortal no not that again anything but that racist and old tiny as that whole thing was but uh uh <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Craig. <laughs> Funny. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ferrisay is taunting this creature. Yep. Uh, Ugwe is going to maintain his ready to action. Uh, Makranam is also going to switch places with the frilled surprise. Okay, if he comes in here, we're going to mix my goo with his goo. Uh, says Makranam. Uh, he starts to glisten like he's like a really gooey bag at this point in time. Uh, please don't think about that too uh, too much. Uh, <laughs> Makranam is a mimic slash bag of holding. Yep, yeah, exactly. Um, and he is the party's sidekick? Mascot? Sure. Yeah. Leader? Zephyros? <laughs> Zephyros is going to maintain his ready to action. Okay, you've got your wand in your hand, and you're you're He's you're got ready his to. Wand in his head. Yeah. Okay, uh, San, you got your bow. This this massive, oversized bow, as you are a half giant and can bend back what only giants could. What are you doing? Um, the the fog is still up there, right? The fog is still swirling, and it looks like there are eels kind of uh, moving around in the fog that are kind of creepy. Okay, then. Oh, you can see Ferrisay. Ferrisay's like, like she's facing, she's facing the uh, the outside of the train, and you could see her uh, silhouette through the mist. All right. Well, for lack of better things to do, I fucking shoot Ferrisay in the face. Um, I see. He's still hiding. So I, um, I use the wand of cure light wounds on um, on Ugwe. Do I have to touch him? Oh, uh, Bra- uh, give me a second. Brack is chaotic. He took no damage. So your prisoner, <laughs> your prisoner took no damage from that. I forgot about the swirling spells. Just a bunch of chaotic energy uh, swirled around him. Uh, so you're gonna use a ki- uh, cure light wound wands on Ugwe? Yeah, you could five foot step. Use a wand. So I do have to touch. You him. have to touch him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, so yeah, I do that and step back. Okay. Are you gonna shoo your animals away, or are they? You could also command your animals as a move action. Uh, or as part of your move, nah, you can. They, they can chill. Okay. So um, it's, it's, yeah, I, I just pure old way. Uh, D8, um, D8 plus one, and then tick off a charge. Four. Um. Okay, I will tick off the damage on Ugwe. And then uh, the train, uh, 
the frilled surprise got injured. You're not really commanding him to attack, so he's just gonna like hop away a little bit. Yeah. And I... then and then Rover. I think there's a bunch of unnatural shit going on. He's also gonna whine and and kind of skitter away. Yeah, I, I don't hold him. Okay. Um. He does not bump into the professor who is invisible. The tar-blooded titan spawn. What the fuck is he gonna do? You, you little, little petal. I'm going to pluck you. Fuck, he doesn't have... I guess it's time. He flaps his wings and with a single kind of uh, a jump, he jumps to the other side of the train. <laughs> the barrier of protection is, like, sparking up against him. Uh, Ferrisa, you could see that it seems to be hurting him. But he does continue moving forward. Now, the train isn't 15 feet across. It's more like 5, so... His movement to here is 15, 20, brings him to here. He continues his kind of awkward fly, 25 to the door. And just to be clear, I can't see him even straight through the door because of what Parasite did. The yep, castle. and then he moves through your wall. What happens when he does so? Uh, he's going to need to make a, um, a port save. Okay. At a minus 2. Uh, yes. This one is DC twenty. Is there is there SR? Um... Oh, clear. Uh, yes. Yeah. Clear Ito. Much love, man. Much love. Indeed. Thanks, man. I'm gonna show off some of the emotes that we have uh, with bits cheering. Um... Yay! Look at those cool dragons. <laughs> I've I've got a blue one and a red one. As as the tiers of uh, of cheering get unlocked, uh, people will get those cool emotes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then Luke really loves channel points for some reason. <laughs> we, 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 have, we haven't quite figured out how to use them on our channel, but... Uh... <laughs> what do you mean? You nailed it, yeah. you know, uh, that's, that fu that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> that used, like, a few hundred, All right. Man. Is, there, is there SR to the... Uh, okay, so you need to break his SR. However, because he's pushing against the barrier, I'm going to give you a plus 40 or roll. Because the because the barrier that's supposed to keep these creatures out is actually making him weaker. All right, and I have spell penetration also. So that's a plus six total, and you're trying to crack twenty four. Let's see if we can do it. Uh, twenty. Is that correct? Yes. You rolled seven, a you rolled a seven. 14, 15, 16, Yeah, twenty. Okay. Uh, he's no. he strides through your wall. It seems to have no effect. Uh, uh, the haunting mist actually affect him as well. Yep, those would have affected him just prior to this, but no SR on haunting mists. Nice, and he gets a will save. Will save at a minus two. Uh, yeah, and haunting mist will. Does save a thirteen is... make it? It's eighteen. He fails against your Haunting Mist. Okay. That will take down his Wisdom? Would yep. that have weakened his save at all? Mm, not against that, but you you are hammering his Wisdom. Uh, his Wisdom is odd. Oh, so, roll, roll D2. Oh, you rolled 2 already. I rolled 2 already. Yeah, yeah okay, so he takes two, 2 Wisdom damage. Dude's Wisdom is hammered. So one more... One more off the top on his on his uh, will save. All right, he continues his movement though, so that was uh, twenty five feet, and another fifteen brings him to the doorway. Now you guys can see him, and there's this whole chain of readied actions that go off, which is another minus two to his saves. 
<laughs> let, l let me check to see if he is not immune to any fear effects. He knows that he is vulnerable because he's entered into this weird this weird aura. Now the readied actions are probably going to make him even more worried. So Ukwe takes a five foot step as part of his readied action and is going to um, he is going to spell combat can't do as readied so he's just striking I think. Uh, he is going to do a a normal strike. Bard song is running. Is there a good hope or anything uh, like Bard that? Bard song is running. Okay. Um, haste is, oh wait, no, his haste. He, his, his, haste the his, his, his haste got screwed up. He does have Cat's Grace oh. going, which affects his attack roll. That's plus 15, plus Bard song is plus 17. Someone want to give me a plus 17 to the roll? He does have Cat's Grace up? Uh, Cat's Grace and a plus one on his weapon. That's plus 18. Nice. Plus he 18. just wants to strike because he's critically on 15 through 20 right now with his Keen Blade. Nice. Nice. Uh, 34. That's a critical threat and a hit. Roll to confirm. Okay. 1, 2, 20, plus 18. Uh, Ooh. Uh, 20 does not hit, um, so it's just a normal hit. And his damage with his katana that comes almost flying out of its sheath is uh, d8 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. Um, I think is he it's, a piranha strike? He is not. He just wanted to hit it. All oh, right. d8 plus 7? Yeah, that's what I got it at. 10. Ten. Uh, this creature absorbs five of it. it. Takes five damage. It's not nothing. It's not nothing, but it is. It basically, the, the katana just basically stops at this thing's flesh, and it's leaving like a, a little, a little mark in in the tar. Uh, speaking of the tar, he has to make a reflex save, or have his weapon stuck to the creature. Uh. Ugwe's reflex save is... That is not good. Nope. Plus eight. He's going to use his cat's luck to roll ah. twice. And take the better of the two. And he has cat's grace running, so it's another two. Yep. Uh, good thing he rolled it, because 29 makes it, but 21 doesn't. So he manages to pull his... As quickly as he struck, he pulls his katana away, and it does not get stuck to the tarry substance that is just dripping all over this creature in its armor. Uh, that was Ugwe's ready to action, which does, n which changes his initiative, so it can be second. Uh, it goes up by one. Makranam, is Fairsay flying or not? I couldn't hear what you were saying. Is Fairsay flying? Are you standing uh, on the? I'm currently standing on the ground. Okay. Uh, okay. So Makronon doesn't have space to go and take his ready to action. Uh, so his ready to action I... is still there. Uh, Zephyros, you're ready to action. Yeah, Zephyros is going to shoot him with a caster level five magic missile. Okay. Uh, so that'll be uh, three one d fours plus three if I make a caster level check successfully against this guy. Correct. Now this thing in the barrier. His SR is lower. Okay, that's good. So his SR is lowered by four, and then you are casting a evocation spell. So, so technically your staff five. helps. Uh, so that's plus one, and then you've got spell penetration plus two, so yep. that's a plus three, plus ten. Uh, 50, uh, 50. No, it's plus twelve. We did the we did it the previous check on my Oh se two. seven plus two. Correct. Yeah, plus two for evocation spell, plus two for spell Th penetration, it becomes plus five with my stat. One, one evocation, two from the, the third eye, which gives you a sacred bonus, and then two oh, from okay. your, two from your, uh, okay, yeah, I got it. Plus 12. So 1d20 plus 12, hoping for a good roll off. Okay, the Thanks magic the magic that. missiles just get eaten. Like it's almost like his skin turned into mm -hmm. at the point of impact into like a, a, a soupy morass, and the magic missiles just go absorbing into him, like he ate your magic. 
Uh, no damage. Professor. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, that was the Furus' uh, readied action as he walked up. He still, the creature still has his actions. Let me adjust uh, Zephyrus' uh, initiative. It's like you rolled a 23. And let me resort. Uh, now he gets his attack. He's going to strike down Ugwe with his blade. He critical threats at a AC forty one. Why Ugwe not Ferrisay? He critical hits at an AC forty one. Um Oh no. Dude, are we about to kill Blake's character? <laughs> well he's gone. There is a mirror image running. Hits an image. That's that's helpful. <laughs> but you but you guys you guys see a a a sword master's stroke that would have gutted any one of you into two, um, and he actually can as a move action do two strikes with his blades, and his other blade goes whipping out towards Ferrisay. Yeah, that, that no. seems fair. AC thirty six. Uh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any divine connection? Uh, no. Okay. I mean, unless my patron is somehow divine. Nope. He does um, uh, ten damage to Ferrise. All right. This bypasses your DR. Ah, okay. I don't think I have DR. You, you don't have cold iron. Okay, and then. Oh, um, uh I do have something, though. Uh, give me just a moment. This rarely comes up because I'm not normally standing in front. Um, really my bad on that one. Uh, mm -hmm. I have... <laughs> you have what? I have displacement. He's also... So, you have displacement, and then... Um, is it minor displacement or major? A lesser cloak of displacement. So that's 20% roll. Uh, there's also mist that he's fighting in, so there's also 20% that way. I don't think those things stack. Uh, probably not. Uh, he doesn't roll under 20 or oh. under, so he doesn't miss. He, he tags you for 10 damage. Uh, you feel like the blade is trying to do something. Like, um, You get thoughts when, you, when you're struck by the blade that the gods are false. Uh, a thousand and one fey deities there might be but all of them hate you uh, like you get these thoughts that you realize that you've had about the gods like everyone goes through ebbs and flows of, of faith but it, it seems like there's a torrent of all of your faithless thoughts kind of tumbling into your brain at once um, Wonderful. no mechanic effect for you uh, Ug Ugwe also seems to be staggered uh <clears throat> Just by being close to the blade, he does not like it. He's growling uh, in a way that a cat man can only growl. Uh, so meow. Me cat man, dude. Yep. Um, Ugwe had a readied action. Zephyrus had a readied action. Professor, you didn't have a readied action. It's your turn. Okay. Um, can I see him? You can through the mist a little. You you, you have to five a step there to see him. Okay, I will five foot step there. Uh, I will do the uh, dual spell casting. Um, <clears throat> he's I'm also blazing to... blue a little bit, like he's being attacked by the abjurative magic uh, of the uh, uh, of the train. And you can actually see along the floor, like the tracery of the circuits of of that ward, kind of blazing through, almost shining through the the uh, the floor plates. I will spend one arcane point to increase the DCs of all spells cast before next turn. Okay. Uh, I will start off with Armor Lock. I saw that he has some metal armor on. Upon pointing at an armored foe, you cause all the joints of the target's armor to stiffen as otherworldly chains wrap around the target. Ooh, stay right there! 
Uh, failed reflex save, a target in heavy metal armor becomes staggered. Uh, light or medium instead becomes entangled. Okay, he's no medium. Um, <clears throat> so if he fails his reflex save in medium, he becomes entangled. Is there an SR check? Uh, where would it say SR? It actually has a category in a spell called spell resistance. Um, I don't think so, but what's I... What's it called? Not a, it's uh, called Armor Lock. I don't see SR. Oh, yeah, Spell Resistance, yes. Yes, it has Spell Resistance. Okay, so you have to break Spell Resistance uh, to make the spell even applicable. Yes, that is correct. His so Spell Resistance right now is reduced to 20 because these abjurative um, wards are weakening his, his, his person. So what do I roll here? You roll 1d20 and add your level, plus anything that boosts your caster level or your or your uh, SR check. Spell. Uh, I don't have anything like that, I don't think. I think it's okay. just... Okay. D, d20 plus 7. Oh, and you crack it. All right, so you see his armor bend and kind of warp, and uh, uh, things are happening. Uh, there are the cracks of uh, uh, joints in his armor. There's something really weird about his armor. His armor is like attached to his body, so this is also twisting and, and uh, uh, causing the creature pain. Nice. Uh, he needs to make a reflex save. Now, his reflex save is subtract by two and also a little bit lowered by that. You are picking on a really crappy save. He rolls a 15. Does that make it? Uh, I don't think so. It's level two. No, that's not going to make it. That doesn't even clear my in. Okay. His his armor is twisted around him. Now he's entangled. That doesn't mean he's. Uh, it does not mean he's incapacitated. And so, as soon as that's whipped off, uh, in as soon as it's left my lips, I'm also beginning to mutter, uh, "Aphasia." I heard him doing verbal spell components earlier. Uh, I approve of this cursing stuff. And so... Uh, I'm going to try and hit him with aphasia. Okay, this is your dual wanding that you're that you're using, your dual casting? Yes. Okay. And I'm trying to get him to forget how languages work. Uh, so 1d7 plus... Or 1d20 plus 7 to try and get over SR. I don't... I only roll 18. I had to get 20 there. Was that the case? Yep, yeah. The aphasia magic washes over him. Uh, he he is still speaking in diabolic okay. tongues. I am visible, unfortunately. Yeah, the professor uh, turns visible and he, he, he sees you. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good reaction. Uh... <laughs> Pharisee, you, you're standing in melee with this horrible, horrible uh, creature. Pixel is also here. Yep. Pixel is going to touch him. Nice. Using her, her evolved familiar, uh, she has reach with touch spells, so she kind of pirouettes into him really quickly, kind of spinning uh, uh, spinning on a dime and, uh, and is going to attempt to touch him. Now, his AC, his touch AC... Before wandering into this area is 13. After being entangled, it's now 11. And then because he's in the area, it's 9. His touch AC is 9 right now. Come on. He's got a plus 19 <laughs> attack roll. He's very, very dexterous. And, uh, 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 Right, like um, like a little whirlwind. Not a one. Critical I hit. Roll a twenty. Okay. Um, critical, one, critical. Not. You confirm the critical as we all chant chart 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 as sure, you chart, as chart. you used a uh, uh, plus seven, plus two, plus four for the spell penetration because I do need to get to his SR on the touch of the. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ah. 23. And you do. Okay. Give me a percentile for... Yeah, I think 20 was the DC on this. 20 is the DC. It was 24 outside, but because you lured him into the into the protected ground, it's like he's on holy ground right now. Oh, but I... 
I added I added a plus four to my roll. Ah, so you got a 19, which fails by one. Are there any of the hero points or the hero points or anything like that that can help you guys here? Oh. Come on, dig deep, boys. This would be a good one to get through. Uh, I can I'm send sure sort of a Zenith through to him. I recall having a hero point and not using it. I'm just trying to see where it is. Tech has one, but uh, he's not here. <laughs> Tech went after the thing that he thought his queen wanted. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have a magical harrow card. I had one. Spider. What was your hero? Mine. Oh, well, yeah. this harrow card said 13 arrow stone lane. Hmm. And I, I think the professor used his yeah. joke used card already, team. yeah. Yeah, get out of the level drain. I don't recall mm -hmm. using mine though. I might have. Got you got the snake bite, uh, which allows you to do a charge to negate poison venom, coup de gras. Oh, that's at the end here. I got it. Yep. Yeah, that was the the one from that one. And yeah. Pharisee's card has something to do with disease. Yep. Oh, okay. So I don't think there are any, and I don't think Son was around when, for the hero reading. Or we had somebody on the channel who had a hero point. Yeah, where'd that guy go that gave all those subs away? He probably has one. <laughs> and the action junkie probably has one, but uh, it is okay if I just miss. Okay, right, so... <laughs> got him in the forehead. <laughs> the creature just gets annoyed at, uh, at the thing... Uh, uh, pixel spinning in into him. Uh, I take a five foot step back okay. and say, "Oh, that is a very interesting sword that you've brought me, isn't it? You should just take a nap and let me have it." So I uh, sleep hex it. All right. As a DC twenty will save, <laughs> and I've been grinding that will down for about four rounds. The tar blooded Titan spawn. Oh my god, if it just falls asleep. <laughs> Does not want to go to sleep. You can see his head slowly start to shake side to side after being whapped by a pixel. He realizes, he realizes his mistake of wandering into this place against this really, the really... getting real low, buddy. <laughs> All right, his will save normally is plus 12. Because he's in this... Aura, it's minus two. His hex. Yeah. No, because he's in the holy ground. Oh, okay. So because of the hex, he's good. at minus two. Because he's shaken, it's minus two. And his Six. wisdom damage is minus one. Five. He rolls a seven and gets a 12. He falls asleep, right? Yeah, that's not going to be enough. You. The creature, his wings kind of flap around himself. He crunches over to the side. His head hits the side of the wall, makes a bit of a ding. His armor constricts and is sort of moving around him. He's asleep. Someone should finish him. Uh, but take his sword first. He has not one, but two swords. Take his sword. Both swords. Oh, yes, well... Pharisee... Don't, don't wake him up. Oh, what do we do? What do we do? <laughs> what do we do? What do we do? <laughs> okay, how do we finish him up? Do we just... Someone should go in and stab him real, real hard. But take those weapons away first. Uh, Zephyros has the scythe. Who wants to stab him the hardest? Ooh, the scythe is. How really long? How, how long does uh um the sleep last? <laughs> it's 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 <laughs> it's it's essentially the sleep spell. Um. Uh, until he with, takes without a without a hit dice limit. Yep, it's until he takes damage, right? Uh. 
to, as per sleep, yeah, until he takes damage. Okay, so I, a friend wakes him up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say you guys can, we'll snap out of combat. He's lying there. There's mist, which Seven. makes him makes him a little bit hard to see. I can put electricity Z in my scythe. Zephyros wanders walk. over. I can walk up to him, get him with my scythe and electricity, with potentially using some of my arcane pool to make sure that I get a good hit. Would you I try to turn him to wood? Would you give I'll, me the? What do you mean I'll by that? Hard song running. That might not be a bad idea, Professor. Oh, if killing him doesn't work, you could turn him to wood and then we could kill him. Because we could sure carve wood. I'm going to take both of the swords. Okay, uh, so g give does me... Wood, does the wood wand have spell resistance? Give me uh, a sleight of hand check as you're removing the blades from his grip. Oh, uh, he fell asleep. He dropped them. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I could slide with him. Um, yeah, the the wood wand would have spell resistance. We should lead with that. His his blades are actually locked in with his armor, so you got to unhook Ooh. them. <clears throat> that one. Oh no. Okay, you you grab the blade and you kind of clink. You you you're not able to remove the blades from his hands. He's he's just got. His fists around, his fists around them, and then they're and they're locked into his gauntlets, and he's, he's. I'll, I'll step back and say, you can hang on to him for now. Okay. I do it fast. Is the mist is the mist still there? Uh, I can dismiss the mist, but that yeah, I can dismiss the mist. It's dismissible. Okay. And I can use a misfortune hex on him, uh, which has a chance to. Let's see here. Let's get the order on this right. Professor, I think if turning him into wood as spell resistance, you might have to do it. Yes, uh, it does. Will the gates, so I can misfortune hex him, then dismiss the mist, and then let the professor do the drop. The professor? Uh, the Okay. The, the elephant professor okay are we are we gonna you want to crack it you want to crack yes uh misfortune hex doesn't crack but he does need to make a saving throw okay. right dc 20 um That's that same one minus seven he fails which means that for his if he survives the coup de gras damage he gets two fortitude saves and takes the worst of the two results and i'll cackle the, the whole way to keep the misfortune going. Okay. And I'll I'll per, I'll have book homes or the Everbark wand on the ready. Ready to action. It doesn't work. All right. Uh, Ugwe okay. is just gonna move in to to like help Zephyros just in case it doesn't work. You will have the honor of dispatching this horrible foe, this outsider. He says like he now knows what outsiders are. <laughs> uh, okay, Zephyros. You raise your necrotic, uh, your necrotic scythe up high, and you. Yeah, first I'm going to stow the wand that I have to make sure that I can raise the the, the scythe. Yep. I'm going to cast uh, electricity, uh, shocking grasp into my wand for the additional damage. You are me. you are an evil, evil man. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I want to make sure this thing dies. So uh -huh. I'm doing everything I can to make sure this thing dies. Mm -hmm. So I'm casting shocking grasp into my into my uh, staff uh, into my into my side. I'm going to do a two-handed attack. Yep. And I can use arcane pool points to make sure that I get as high a hit as possible. You don't have to roll the hit, coup de gras. Oh, I don't have to roll the hit. Oh, okay. So, so you could you could use your arcane pool points for other things. I'm going to use my arcade pool points uh, for shocking grasp, and I'm going to make a two-handed. Uh, can I increase the damage? Uh, you could just increase the plus on the blade by two. All right, let's increase the plus on the blade by two. Okay, so you basically put the uh, 
you put the blade against the thing's throat, and you're gonna try to cut the thing's head off with the uh, with your attack. You just kind of yeah. aim it up, and you are playing you are playing executioner at this point. Yes, I am. Grim Reaper. Yes, I am, and I have scrolled. What is the normal damage of your scythe? Uh, I scrolled past, and I'm just going back to it. Uh, it is a plus one. Normal damage two-handed is plus eleven. Okay, Bard Song. Plus thirteen. Uh, sorry, sorry. Hold on. I think the roll is plus eleven. It's two d six. Nope, two d six plus eleven. Two d six plus thirteen actually. And then, if I have bull strength on as well. Okay, I so don't, I don't have bull strength, so it's two d six plus eleven. Okay. Plus 11, yeah. plus 13 with Bard Song, plus 2 from your Magus Point is plus 15. Lucid Cake. Okay. okay, so 2d6 plus 15, and then also we have to do the shocking damage. No, no, this is the base damage. Your yeah, scythe, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. scythe yeah. does times 4 on crits. So you do 8 to d6 plus 60 plus 1d6 for the necromantic damage, and then you, you crit on the spell, so that's uh, 5d6 oh, wow. plus 1 becomes 10d6 plus 2. Holy shit. Okay, so I'm doing 10d6 plus, plus 2? For the spell, plus 8d6 plus 60. This is going to be effective. Plus 1d6 for the necromantic damage. <laughs> Right. 19d6 total, although is he, is he resistant to any of that? Uh, his resistance has dropped a little bit and it's um, yeah I, so, it's just so, so much 19d6 that... plus 62 uh, that's, that's correct right. Yep. 19d6 plus 62 Jesus Christ 127 okay uh, he resists 10 of that, so it becomes 117. It, he's taken 127 damage. He's still alive, however bloodied. However, he now needs to make a DC 137... 127... Um, fortitude save. <laughs> what? It's a coup de grace. That's how you calculate the DC to fortitude save it? DC is 10 plus damage dealt on the critical hit for the coup de grace. Oh. Now, the only way for him to make this is, is a nat 20, but he has to roll twice and take and the take worst the result <laughs> because of the misfortune uh, hex. Uh, <laughs> he got a 20! He got 120! <laughs> Zephyrus just... Pulses electrical magic into his scythe. He looks for a moment like He Man, uh, <laughs> calling the power of Grey Skull. There's electricity just coursing down, and it. it's like, how much electricity is going to pump into this thing? Ah! He double hands, uh, he double hands the scythe into the creature's neck, and basically against the side of the wall, takes off the head. the The head of the sleeping creature uh, basically kind of doubles over. Ah! It's still making noises as you rudely awakened it. Uh, its 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 body is just bleeding this tar sh like substance, and then the the ward is also kind of brackishly making the uh, the tar of its body bubble. Uh, the creature is not disappearing, which tells the summoner, uh, pr uh, the professor, that the creature is actually here, like it lives somewhere out in the ethereal realm. Um, oh, son. <laughs> I'm sorry this wasn't a very good hunt. Uh, the next one, though, will be great, because I'm all out. You will pay for that! The head is still fucking talking to you, so I'm going to create Can an... the head talk to me while it's being shocked with 5d6? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you... you it, it, it kind of... <laughs> it, did, it did its... Uh, uh, it did its... Um, let's just get a head token here. Uh, medium-sized creature, tiny head. Uh, so the head is lying on its side uh, after it sort of got electrocuted and it's melting to the floor, but it's still talking to the professor. You will pay for that. You will pay for that. 
I'll translate a bit disinterestedly. <laughs> do you not? Do you not know what we are? We are legion. We are, we are legion. We are the blood of titans. Blood of titans. We are chosen race. You and your little bubbles. You are dead at my feet. <laughs> you will. Yes, yes, uh, and he's expired. And see, thank you, thank you. That was quite well done, Zephyros. Uh, well, I, I would like to take credit, but it was it was that sleep spell and that hex that did it. I can't believe that, Pharisee. Eh? You fell asleep right in the middle of a battle, just like that. Never it's seen very anything. tiring, I'm afraid. Mm. You. You've grown much stronger since we were children at your master's foot. I've had a few trials and tribulations along the way. I've never seen or heard of anything like this. I'm going to take his swords and pull them off to the side. Okay. Yeah. You, 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 you finally, with some time, unhook the swords from his armor that's all kind of twisted. and you. I'll definitely do it carefully. When you When you pick up the first one... Um, oh, it feels strange. It it feels like for a moment, like all hope is lost. Just holding the blade in your hand. These aren't happy creatures. Perhaps we should uh, stash what he has on him uh, with old Macronom there before the guards get here and try to lay claim to it. The, not the sharp things, but yes, all the rest of the good stuff. The other blade fills your mind with thoughts of thousands of these things all scrambling around outside of these perfect, beautiful pearls trying to get in. Oh, I think there are a lot of them. The visions speak to... Ah, oh, many of them trying to sneak into the pearls. When someone hears about visions, he kind of extends his hand like, give that to me. Hmm, yes. I'll hand him one of the one of the swords. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Son essentially wants to experience those. Okay, so, Son, you, you pick up one of the blades. Uh, this is, which one? The one that, the one... one Parasite gives me. Alright. Uh, the one that gave the visions. As opposed to the one that gave the sense of hopelessness. San, for a brief moment, um, you had a flash of this raging giant, bigger than big, truly titanic. And you know the words he's saying. It's like the blade was there, or at least the metal from which the blade was made was there during the temper tantrum of a titan. The temper tantrum was like sundering a continent and, you know, causing two tectonic plates to break apart, or one tectonic plate to break apart into two and causing all sorts of uh, uh, earthquakes and tsunamis and... Uh, Maybe people live there, maybe not. And the Titan was angry that these ups, this upstart race that called themselves deities would deign to think that they are better than Titans because they can create lesser beings. And that the Titans would show these deities that they too could create and the beings that they would create would be superior son makes mental note of that oh, son's like oh you, you kind of stagger back as like like you were in a cyclone of destructive uh of of destruction on some prime world somewhere like felt the wrath of one of these titans um do you have knowledge nature? Song? Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Uh, also planes. Uh, yeah, give me either roll, which one, whichever one's higher. You actually uh, might planes. know the name of this titan. Planes is uh, my class skill. Or, like, my main, main character skill. Uh, 
Nineteen. Um, you don't know the name, but you know that this guy was the embodiment of destruction, and that he had three heads. Fair enough. And in the vision, it had three heads as well. Yeah, the the three heads were kind of separating into almost like a triple etten, and then going back into three faces. And he was just—you caught a glimpse of something bad. Gotcha. Um. um yeah. yeah, someone clips the blade to his waist. Um, like, yeah, don't don't touch this. Uh, oh, is it for keeping or for eating? It's for I'll, keeping, uh, but you shouldn't keep it, Mokka, now. Okay. I'll sort of bend over and have a look at it, looking through my monocle and cast Identify as I look at it. Yeah. Be very careful, it's sharp. Which one? You need you need you need to separate it from San's magic to truly identify it. You need to sit down with it. He's got it hanging from his belt. He's got other magical auras that would keep you from uh, keep you from properly identifying it. Uh, Son, uh, if you hold it up and let me take a look, I may be able to give you more info on it. Uh, but now may not be the time. Of yeah, let's not do it now. This, this thing is hard to hold. Yes, well, let's finish with uh, removing this uh, unfortunate character of his worldly possessions before the guard get here. Technically, um, otherworldly possessions. Yeah, yes, that is quite astute of you. Um, perhaps yeah. we also should uh, make ourselves scarce uh, for when the guards come back. Okay, um... What do we want to call this blade? This blade will be called the the Brink of Destruction, and then um, the one that uh, Farisay has is called Hope Stealer. But I like it. And if you if you give me until next week, I'll come up with something much cooler than <laughs> than on the fly. Thanks, thanks, I'll, bro. Uh, instead, bend down, investigate uh, this guy. See what I can tell about. What exactly is a tar blooded titan spawn? Yeah, give me a knowledge planes. Uh, since we're out of combat, could we? Assist? Oh yeah, you could you combat. could all gang pile this skill check if you want. Yeah, I'll, I'll help you on this as as well. I I, I can auto aid. How many uh, aids is that? From Zephyrus auto aid. One, uh, Son and Ferrisay. That's three auto aids. So plus six onto the thirteen. Uh, 32. Okay. Was that including all the aids? Yes. This thing has... This type of outsider has several names. Uh, Gehreleths, also known as Demodans. You want to spell these things, probably? Yeah, I'm going to write these ones down. A Gehreleth is the like the old D and D term for these things, and then a much newer term would be demodand. They are a type of evil outsider. They lean chaotic. Actually, they are chaotic, but they're not demons. This particular one. Well, what do you want to know first? This, the particulars of this one, or do you want to know more about the generalities of Demodans? Uh, let's do the generalities and then circle on into the specifics here. Demodans are the polluted, um, twisted creations of Titans.
who sculpted from the clay and polluted waters of the abyss an entire race of underworldly beings that would worship and serve them. That's handy. Jealous that the gods created races or raised them up. They did this to not only increase their own power, but to prove to the old gods that they too could craft life. Um, these creatures like the titans poured into them a hatred of deific absolutely hate divine power and the servants of the gods it's curious though they're quite rare um or at least in the old text they are quite rare in that something about them being locked away because they were an affront to creation. This particular one is called a Tari Demodand. It is the weakest of the Demodands. And it is the grunt in the Demodans army did not feel that weak. They are bred for battle. And yet, yet, yet they are the weakest. But they are sleepy. Very sleepy. They are masters at two-weapon fighting. Like, like, the... They are dervishes upon the field. Uh, over 30, uh, you know that they are fighting it. You need, to get through their DR, you need good and magical weapons. Don't bother using acid or poison against them. And like many demons and devils, they can summon their own kind. And you realize that had you fought it on the other train, you may have faced several of them on the other car where the wards were not active. Mm -hmm. It could have summoned uh, one or two of himself to help. It could, could they then have summoned more? Uh, summon means temporarily there. So no. Uh, the wizards know this on does not. Right. I'll share all of the musings. I guess we'll probably all discuss it out loud since we're all in on this role. I think we'll probably all put it, it When it said, we are legion, the thought of there, there being a legion of them out there is terrifying just, to behold. Yeah, this is just the weakest one. There's no army in the Great Wheel that would stand against an army of these things. Um, I'll detect magic on it. I'm looking to strip this thing of uh, anything <laughs> else it's got of value. Sure. Uh, its breastplate might be magical. It's made out of a strange metal. Um, yeah. And you will find, after Marty takes a quick wash and break... Actually, this is probably a good place to leave tonight's game. Uh, as we're yeah. as we're approaching eleven, so yeah. we'll say as you guys are looting through the stuff and thinking about lore and kind of poking at the body, uh, you guys hear doors from the train car, and there's, there's probably a group of soldiers <laughs> that that have heard like what's going on and wait, cows? What what bounty hunter fighting? They're fucking up the train, and you know you guys you guys are gonna have to deal with a a group of people that are that are charging to the back of the train to. S save the day um 
Uh, so we'll leave, we'll leave we'll leave it there. I will roll up some treasure offline. Um, this is a CR thirteen creature. I'm going to quickly look at the uh, the experience points because you guys are close to eighth. You might have just leveled uh, because of Probably. that fight. Uh, let me let me check. It's been it's been a while. It has been a while. Mm-hmm. You guys have been inching your way towards it. And somewhere on my lap, on my desktop, I do have a folder. That was that was a beautiful fight. If we had not have overcome it with the shenanigans we had, that would have been pretty brutal, pretty quick. If we nearly killed Blake, slow there. enough fight. If if they don't rush us, um, yeah. and we don't rush them, and there's time to sort of degrade them, yeah, I can degrade them pretty well. But that doesn't happen all that often. So it was a lot of fun for it to happen once. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it was a lot of fun for it to happen. It kind of is like three rounds of the hell do I do because Ferris put that goddamn fog up again. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I may adjust tactics and use a little bit less fog. In the, I mean, it the, worked. the fog kept it from really understanding what he was fighting, too. The fact yeah, that you were yeah. taunting him and there wasn't much coming out of there. He's like, yeah, I, could, I, can, I can take yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, XP calculator. So, there was some good role playing. Um, like, you're kind of like a. Is this like an Excel sheet or something? Yeah, there's an XP challenge grid, XP a chart. A CR 13 divided by. There are five of you. Yes. With a, with a bunch of pets. Um, you understand what the creature is. You use the ward effectively. That is like a CR4. Uh, you saved a dog. Hell yeah. It's like a CR1. You, you saved it. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm getting down to like... Uh, oh, you you incapacitated the creature properly. We're getting into like CR1 halves and thirds and that sort of thing. Okay, that gives you that much... partially successful torture count... Uh, successfully like dealing with the creature that it was difficult to hold is what you got your experience for um, you guys are at 104,000 and you need 115,5 yeah, that's close you got 7,500 <laughs> 7, which is Not quite there. You're at ah, rats. eleven. You're at one hundred and twelve thousand, and you need one hundred and fifteen five. Yeah, all right. yeah, another game. So you, or yeah, so. another game or so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. We we need a we need a walk into a city to murder. We need a name for tonight's <laughs> game, as is our tradition. We name the games after we play because. I don't know what the fuck happens <laughs> during the game. Like, I, I couldn't... I could kind of predict. Night? Was it? Start what? Tari Night? Tari Night? I've been working on the railroad. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tari Night's not bad. Tari Night. I like it. Night, Unless we come up with something better in the next uh, 30 seconds. Tari Night is, is good. Who's loose in the caboose? <laughs> <laughs> Lucy Caboose. To be fair, 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 to be I think I think it's a good place to leave it. Uh, thanks for all those that joined the channel. Um, uh, glad to, glad to see you here. Hope you guys have a fun time. We post these videos eventually on YouTube. I've I've been a little bit delinquent on this particular campaign, but I will. Uh, there's still like 30 episodes there that you could go back and watch the early bumblings of the jerks emeritus, which is what they call their party. Um, uh, we've got other campaigns as well. Um, glad that you stopped by. Hope you do so in the future. For those that are watching on YouTube, thanks for uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we hope you guys enjoy this as much as we do. Peace. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.
Caboose, Caboose, Caboose is on fire.